Greetings, Internet. I welcome you to Tinkerer Overdoses on Caffeine and Creates Crackpot Market Theories Trying to Predict the Future. Today I will present my hypothesis for why the market for FDM printers has gotten stale and is on the cusp of a huge shakeup. And I will discuss how I envision this going while burning all the bridges and ruining my chances of ever getting review samples or sponsorships. I'll start with some context and a little history lesson. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the <laughs> cut. Wrong story. <coughs> In the first era, there was Stratasys. Stratasys held patent US 534043A modeling apparatus for three-dimensional objects with an iron fist. And for 20 long years, no mortal soul was to touch the forbidden technology of hot glue robot. All to protect innovation and avoid a communist dystopia world because patents and the monopolies they create are a good thing. <coughs> Just how would we innovate without it? Good thing we have patents. But not even the mightiest king might rule forever. And so one day, the mighty and very good patent system could no longer hold on to US 5340433A. And so a hero by the name of Dr. Adrian Boyard took it upon himself to make the impossible possible to bring his wildest dreams to life. A dream of rap rap, self-replicating machines capable of producing more of their own. A hot glue robot for the masses. And in the spring of 2007 he succeeded, ending the first era and Stratasys' iron grip on the industry with the creation of the first Darwin. A machine in a cruel twist of fate printed by a Stratasys printer. Now the second era of 3D printing was upon us. The era of RepRap. After the first Darwin followed another, then two more, then four, and soon there were thousands of Darwins replicating all over the world. The Darwin's limitations quickly became apparent. Stiffness, accuracy, electronics. And just like a human exposed to illegally obtained cesium-137, if an idea is exposed to the internet, it will start to mutate. The Darwin evolved and the Mendel, the Huxley, the i3, the Cossel and many more were born. The project was growing and the first companies were sprouting up to grasp this newfound potential. Their competition and innovation led to better extruders, hot ends and motion systems. Now to me this one's a real head scratcher. One for the old contemplation seat. One that makes me go, hmm, because all of this innovation happened after the patent ran out. Really makes me think. But the barrier of entry was still high, and a self-built machine required technical expertise, while pre-builds required lots and lots of money. The price had to come down, and in 2018, Creality set in motion the third era of consumer 3D printing, the era of the Ender 3. This inconspicuous looking machine, a minimal viable product at best, took the market by storm. Made in China from generic components and cost optimized until you couldn't anymore, tinkering with your own FDM machine had come down from 20,000 euros to 2,000 euros to eventually around 200. With it came many versions, variations, clones, adaptations and replicas that flood the market to this day, one cheaper and with worse quality control than the other. A good project? Maybe to tinker on or something cheap? Nothing beats the Ender 3 and its army of almost identical clones. If you want a shitty printer, this segment is where you buy. For years now, we have been in this third era. The market for ready-made 3D printers consisted of low-quality Chinese imports at the bottom, mediocre enthusiast machines in the middle and the industrial printers no mere mortal can afford at the top. I think it's fair to say. The enthusiast market for 3D printers, from 500 to 2000 euros, has stagnated for the last few years. You have the rap rap and DIY crowd with Voron, Redrig, Railcore and more. Here you buy the parts to build and tune your own printer, not a ready-made machine. Then you have companies like Prusa, Lulzbot and the new Ankermake, which all try to hold on to outdated Batslinger designs. They might make sense if you want something cheap, but these days suppliers for linear rails have gotten too good and Batslingers are easily outclassed. You can build a better motion system at this price point. Batslingers above 500 euros are outdated and will be forced out of the market soon. And then there's the remainder of this segment, like overpriced Ultimakers and Dremels. If not for the educational market, a machine this bad for the money couldn't exist. Last of all, the Chinese attempts at entering this segment. Shitty Chidi and Creality machines. I'm convinced there's a rule these machines have to ship with at least one fatal flaw or something. Especially the people at Chidi make these boneheaded mistakes that really make me wonder what the hell they are smoking over there. Here's a free lesson in thermodynamics. Heat excites air. Excited air is less dense and therefore rises to the top. So if you want to heat your build chamber, 
You should stop putting holes into the top of your printer. You're so close to building a great machine. Why'd you ruin it with such a stupid decision over and over and over again? But I'm getting off track. Let's get to the conclusion and the most interesting chapter of this video. The future of 3D printing. Now the year 2023 is upon us and with it the end of this drought. The beginning of the fourth era. The mid-range market is getting real competition. Bamboo Labs, Snapmaker, the Prusa XL and hopefully more in the future. Delivering innovative designs, elegant software solutions, new sensors and more. And who knows who else will take this opportunity and enter this segment within the year. To wrap this video up, if I was an aspiring maker with a knack for building 3D printers, I'd seriously consider trying to take a slice of that juicy mid-range market. Thanks for watching, I'll go back to learning CAD and don't forget, all hail to the machine spirits.